Hello, this is Trevor. Today we're working on another DOM lab in Port Swiggers Web Security Academy. This time it's a DOM XSS using web messages and JSON.parse. So the lab uses web message and parses the message as JSON to solve the lab, construct the HTML page, exploits the volume and calls the print function. Sweet. All right, well, let's take a look. Please remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment, let me know how I'm doing. I would appreciate that. So we're looking for json.parse and it uses uh, web messages. So let's uh, view source. I'm gonna control F message. Not that one, not that one, not that one. There we go. Okay, so we have uh, three variables created. One iframe, that is an iframe element. Second is Acme player, which is an object. And it's uh, the key of element is set to iframe. And then we have an empty or a, a variable D that's, that's created, but doesn't have any value yet. The iframe is appended to the body. And here, so we can see that the the message data comes through as E. So we get E.data, and then we parse that and save it to the variable D. If there's an error in the parsing, uh, we're going to return. And then we have this switch, D.type. Okay, page load, scroll into view. Case okay, so load channel. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. All right, so it and the height. And, yeah, so all right, this is where I think the vulnerability where we're going to exploit it, right? So we're accepting uh, untrusted data. We're parsing that serialized JSON into an object D. And then we're getting the, if the type is load channel, we're setting the URL value to this source. Uh, okay, so let me just write this down so I don't forget it. We need a JSON object. We need a type here. So I'm gonna add that type and we want that to be load channel, so we get into this case statement. So I'll just copy that. And then we need a URL key, and that is gonna be our payload it gets written to the source. Okay, so let's do the JavaScript scheme that we've done before. We'll do console.log1 to test it out. We need a, and yeah, so that looks pretty good. Let me remove the extra spaces. Those aren't required. And I don't want to cause any issues. And then we need, so we need this as the value. So I'm going to put double quotes here and escape these. Whoops. Whoops. There we go. That one. Okay. Sweet. We need to be able to deliver that. So we need this dot content window dot post message. And we'll put this as the contents here. That looks good. 
And then we need that in an onload function in the iframe. So iframe source equals, we'll put this here, onload equals, and then we'll single quote, yeah, we'll single quote this. Let's um, put this all together just so I get the right stuff here. So I need an end single quote, end the opening tag, close the iframe like that. That should be good. And now I'll copy this and paste it there. So let's look this over. That looks reasonable to me as our payload. Let's go and give it a shot. So I'm going to go to the exploit server and the body here. I'm going to paste that and view. Inspect console failed to execute post mission Togger. Oh crap. I don't have a target. So right here, I'm going to put comma, asterisk, like that. Let's go uh, back. Close this. And view. So I needed to tell it what the target was. I wanted to target any. So that's why I put the asterisk. Hey, there we go. Sweet. All right. Uh, so yeah, this will be our exploit. We need to change this to print in order to solve the lab and then deliver it. Pretty simple. So uh, what do we call this? We're going to call it um, let's move this to a different window. Dom XSS using web messages and JSON parse. Vim Dom XSS using web messages and JSON parse dot pi. Let's start with this. This has everything we need. We're just going to swap out the payload. And this is the script we did in the did yesterday. So I'm going to close that up now. And delete this. Put this as our payload. All right. So we need we're going to do single quotes. That way we can escape this single quote and this single quote. If we use double quotes, we would have need, needed to escape a bunch more and then double escape these escape double escape uh it would have still worked but single is easier obviously so we'll put that there we need to change the source here so that it is um blog dot oh this is a shop by the way shouldn't matter but Like I said, it, yeah, it really should work for both, but, you know, might as well be safe. Shop and shop. Okay. We need an F here. And this line is too long, so I'm going to break it up. 
Where should I break it up? I hate doing this. We'll break it up right there. Okay. F. Oh, we need to change this one. Shop. Okay. That looks good to me. Shop on the. Let me just look it over and double check. That's fine. Type load channel URL. Where's our escapes? Oh. Crap, our escapes got removed because we need those escapes. We need doubles here. We don't need to double that one. That one's fine. And those are fine. Everything else is fine. That, what about this one? We have a single, yeah, that's fine. Because this escape is for Python. This escape is, I want the backslash to go through to JavaScript. Okay. Whew. It gets kind of, kind of hairy when we're uh, escaping so much in Python, DOM, XSS, using web messages, and JSON parse. Paste this. Send it. Let's see how we did. Woohoo, we got it. Uh, sweet. So just to recap, we uh, looked at the source code, saw that, let's see if I still have it up, I do. Saw that it used an untrusted value to set as the element source. We, uh, based on this, uh, and let me show you one other thing. So. I don't know if you remember in the last video, I talked about how I wanted to create the study material for this DOM or, or whatever. I did end up creating that and I used uh, the mind map stuff. I put it all here. So we have a list of common sources straight from the, the lab material or the learning material. And then we have a list of syncs here along with links to each of the documentation for that sync on port swigger. So if I went to the element.source, which is the one we did this time, and click that, you can see we get opened up to uh, the information on this, um, on link manipulation, which is exactly what we did with that element source. So that's what I put together for uh, studying this. The reason I brought it up uh, was because we were looking at here and we saw the element.source. We also saw json.parse, but yeah, this isn't, I don't know of a way to make it parse and exploit anything the way it is here unless we, you know, did this. Sweet. Um, that's it. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Once we had the payload, we had to do some fancy, uh, you know, escaping to make sure that both Python and JavaScript were was happy with what we were doing. We posted that when the client opened it, it opened an iframe. The iframe had this um, event on load event that passed it a JSON object. That JSON object was interpreted by the, or the serialized JSON object was parsed. And then the, uh, iframe was written here. Iframe was written to the body and then the source was changed 
to our JavaScript uh, scheme. That's it. All right. I hope I did a good job explaining what we did and everything. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Goodbye.